I saw this post online the other day. The contract we have with Mick is exclusively for endurance. And I thought, it's a bit harsh, isn't it? So in today's video, I have to talk about the latest prospects for Mick Schumacher. Is it really all over for Mick in Formula One? Let's roll back the clock a little bit. Teams up and down the grid had their eye on Mick Schumacher after winning the Formula 3, Formula 2 championships in a very short time frame. And of course, everyone just thinks, well, if his father Michael did it, then Mick's got it in him as well. With his father's former relationship at Ferrari, of course, of the amazing success in the late 90s and that string of championships in the early noughties, there was an opening with the customer team of Ferrari in Haas F1 team come 2021. And that was it. Mick Schumacher was on the Formula One grid, the dream that he'd wanted to live out for so, so long and following the footsteps of his father. In his first season, I think it's fair to say he struggled to find his feet. And I hate to say it, but he crashed pretty regularly throughout. Let's just take a look here. Uh, Imola, Monaco, France, Hungary, Turkey, Mexico, and don't forget as well that huge shunt in Saudi Arabia. And that was just the first time around. It was all looking like the same story in 2022 when he had an even bigger shunt in Saudi Arabia in the following season in 2022. And then you had the collision with Sebastian Vettel in Miami. And then that horrible crash in Monaco where the car literally split in two. And you wondered just quite how he was gonna get out of that. But things really started to turn for Mick in 2022. He got to Canada, qualified P6 in a damp intermediate conditions qualifying. And then he scored his first ever points in Formula One at the subsequent British Grand Prix. And then P6, legitimately a race result around Austria the week after that. It was an incredible time for Mick Schumacher at this moment of his Formula One career. Sadly, you know, with all the bad luck that he looked like he'd put behind him at that point in the season, he couldn't capitalize on that P8 and P6 finishes. And then he didn't get anywhere with success or scoring any more points for the team. So Haas then went, you're out, mate. And there you have it. He hadn't done enough in his two seasons at Haas to maybe get the jump up to a bigger team and progress in his career. In 2022 alone, his series of crashes resulted in $2 million of crash damage. And for a team like Haas, that is just something that they cannot afford to keep happening. So at the end of the day, that was a pretty defining moment for Mick at Haas and there wasn't any openings elsewhere at Williams at the time because Logan Sargent developed enough super license points to come into that Williams seat. So Mick Schumacher was out of a drive. Well, like any driver that's out of a seat on the Formula One grid, what do you do? You look around, there's not any seats available. I'll become a reserve driver so I can keep in the sphere of the Formula One paddock. So I kind of know what's going on still and I can hear about certain rumors on the grapevine that there might be an opportunity over here. There might be one opportunity over there and I can do some marketing. I can improve my brand as a driver and praise the Lord, the savior that is Toto Wolf gave Mick Schumacher that opportunity. German driver with German manufacturer. Yes, please. Danke schön. Thank you very much. So Mick signed on the dotted line to become the reserve driver for Mercedes, uh, to which he still is now alongside Frederick Vesti, another Formula 2 hotshot at the moment. And is in great company at one of the, you know, might not feel like this lately, one of the most successful teams in Formula One in recent times. If you think about Mick Schumacher's time in 2023 Mercedes, he was basically being Toto's bodyguard at the races, standing side by side of him in the garage, watching all the things happen, looking at the data and hearing what was going on on the team radio. So here we are arriving in 2024 and he took this opportunity to race in the World Endurance Championship for Alpine, of which he finished P12 in the first race already that's happened in the Qatar, the La Salle circuit. And he's gonna be racing at the prestigious 24 hour Le Mans later on in 2024. So you'd think that being part of the Alpine family, you know, they would be looking after him now, getting around him and giving him that stability, feeling of comfort and confidence and get back up to where he wants to be on the F1 grid. 
Well, that's where you're wrong. The whole point of this video, coming back round to the post that I saw earlier, Bruno Faman has got mixed criticism since becoming the team principal and certainly starting off this 2024 campaign, which has been, well, not great. There's been rumor, speculation that Mick Schumacher would have a F1 test run to keep his eyes fresh in the Formula 1 car, of course, of last year to give that a bit of a run. They've come out and exclusively said, no, Mick Schumacher is not going in F1 car because he's had his chance at Haas and we're a bit scared that he might cause another £2 million of damage. Now, of course, I don't think it's quite a money thing here. It's probably because Jack Doohan is coming through and is officially their reserve driver. You know, they don't probably don't want Mick Schumacher to be like, well, you've been the reserve driver for Williams as Mercedes customer team. You're the Mercedes reserve driver. So don't get greedy, mate. And they want to honor and respect and the loyalty of Jack Doohan, who, of course, is coming through the ranks and will be jumping in the Alpine car this season should he need to, like a certain Ollie Behrman from Essex, way Essex then, Oli, 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 in Saudi Arabia for that Grand Prix, finishing seventh for an impressive debut there. And teams up and down the grid now probably looking at this new crop of drivers coming through F2, F3, big names, Kimi Antonelli, Oli Behrman, Jack Doohan, Felipe Drogovic, who's been on the fringes of Aston Martin for a little while, and thinking, well, if they can come in and do that in literally a matter of hours, as Oli did for Ferrari, there's a good chance that these new crop of rookies can do just the same as well. And it's not to say they've just forgotten that this is Mick Schumacher, but I just thought it was really harsh for Alpine to come out with that very stern comment and basically rule it out completely. And not even just kind of, you know, brush it under the carpet a little bit. They were brutal with their response to that accusation, those rumors, and I feel like someone like Mick Schumacher deserves maybe a little bit more respect than he received. But hey, we could be looking to this way too much and he might get a test drive later on this season. Maybe Bruno Faman and the rest of the Alpine team have got a bit too much going on at the moment to be thinking about all of those kind of, let's just say, novelties in the grand scheme of things at the moment. So then you think if he's not going to get a test running with Alpine or anyone like that, where next for Mick in F1? It's quite difficult to see a clear path back for him. Quite clearly, Alpine doesn't look like an option because they're not even giving him a running in a test of an F1 car. So you can strike Alpine. And looking elsewhere, who knows where the driver market's gonna end up by the end of 2024, going into next season. Well, if we look at his relationship with Ferrari, he left the Ferrari Driver Academy when he left Haas in 2022 at the same time to be able to explore new opportunities across the F1 grid and not be tied down into certain agreements with the Scuderia. And of course, Haas is still customer team of Ferrari, but can you really see Mick going back to the Haas F1 team after everything that's happened before and the way that it ended? What about where he is now hanging around at Mercedes? Could that be an option? Of course, the dream for Mercedes would be Mick following in his father's footsteps seasons earlier when he returned to the team with Ross Braun as team principal for those couple of seasons. And then a German driver teaming up with a German manufacturer Think how lucrative that is from a commercial point of view. But how likely is that when you've got Frederick Vesti as well? Hasn't had a chance to prove himself yet. Whereas again, Mix had two seasons to do that on the F1 grid, which loads of drivers don't even get one season to show what they're made of, let alone one race. Oh, and hold on one second. What chance does Mick Schumacher have if Max Verstappen is going to go over to Mercedes in 2025? So it's looking even more unlikely that Mercedes could become a thing. By the way, that Verstappen thing is a whole nother video. I do want to make one on it, but I want to let the dust settle a bit first to see if it's actually ludicrous to suggest that or whether there is some actual merit to it. And let's think of the supposed sister team to Mercedes now. All depending on what happens across the grid, it's hard to imagine right now that there's a space there with Alex Albon seeming like he's firmly cemented in that Williams team and wanting to carry it forward. And if Logan goes, it's looking like Kimi Antonelli is going to be in position to take any Williams seat going forward. And of course, like anything in life, but particularly in Formula 1, in the driver circus that goes on in silly season, it's all about right place, right time. And there's a lot of other drivers in the right place at the moment, you might argue, than Mick. 
So there's no doubt that getting out on the racetrack in WEC is a great move right now. But Mick has admitted that the dream still remains F1. He desperately wants to get back to the grid and emulate his father. There are lots of options on the table, of course, for Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton leaving that team after so many seasons there. But can you realistically see Mick Schumacher jumping in alongside George Russell? You kind of probably think, though, that at Mercedes, they're going to want the experience of people out there on the driver market like Fernando Alonso or Carlos Sainz who could be available as well. So it's really hard to see Mick Schumacher and George Russell being together in 2025. So that puts Mercedes out of the question. But no doubt, I'm sure that Mick will find his foot in on the way back to the grid in Formula 1 because at the end of the day, his surname is Schumacher and we clearly know he's got the talent. He just might have to bide his time a little bit. Thanks so much for watching this video. I um, really hope you're enjoying this very beginning of the journey for this YouTube channel around the outside with myself, Jay Peach, and I'll catch you in the next video.